Shake, and this is Matty Crypto, and welcome to the Pulse Chain Podcast. This is episode number two. Hopefully, this is something that I can do every single week for the entire year, and this can go on for years and years. If you like this kind of content, please reach out to me, Telegram, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music. There are a lot of things that are going to be in the description in the link below this. Last week was the very first episode. This is number two. I'm going to try to get on a guest, a special guest in the Pulse Chain community on a weekly basis, maybe one or two every single week, just to give you guys an example of how powerful this community is, but also how knowledgeable this community is. This week, the second episode, I'm going to bring in a buddy of mine. This is Balliot Brand. Can you hear me, Brand? Yes, sir. Thank you for having me on, Maddie. I uh, really appreciate the podcast that you're doing. And at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is just educate as many people as possible. So this is super cool that you're doing this. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I've been talking to Brand for a long time in uh, you know, Twitter and Telegram and obviously YouTube videos and stuff back and forth. The community in Pulse Chain and Hex for the last two years has been, I've been, been around crypto a lot, long time, almost a decade now. And you get into communities uh, you know, Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever your coin is of choice. And you think that community is tight. I mentioned this last week to the guys, but there's something different about Pulse Chain and Hex. We are a, a really intertwined community of friends and we're honestly trying to help each other. And we mentioned about, it, it's not about pumping your bags. And that's what it has been like that for crypto for a long time. These crypto communities, I noticed, they seem really friendly at first, but then you get to to know as, as the, that particular coin grows and matures, I look back like those guys were only doing these these nice things and being kind to each other specifically to pump the bag of that coin, dump it and move on to something else. And I didn't notice that in the time, but hindsight is beautiful. I can compare those experiences with Hex community, the Pulse Chain community. It is different. And I know we're going to be here years and years from now. We're definitely stuck with each other for. 15 years with our stake. So I wanted to I wanted to have you on. You're one of my favorite people in Hex. And I just wanted to take a second. In this episode, the second episode of the, pod, of the Pulse Chain podcast, we're going to go pretty detailed into shares. Hex T shares, which are going to soon be B shares and M shares. And we can get into that. I just wanted people to get a grasp of, of what exactly is a Hex share. What are shares in the Hex community? But first, I just wanted to give a tiny, like a 3,000 foot view of how you got started in, in Hex and just a little bit about yourself before we jump into the shares. Totally. Well, yeah, once again, thank you for having me on in this opportunity. I, I definitely agree with what you mentioned that this, this community is something uh, unlike anything that I've ever been a part of. And it really is something bigger than yourself and something that we can all kind of grow with. But as far as a little bit of my backstory, just briefly, uh, so my name's Brandon Balliet, Balliet Bran. Uh, I've been following Richard since March 15th, uh, 2017, and was a really big fan of listening to his information and his live streams because he had constantly just been providing value and just been consistent with you know, trying to help others, even though he didn't have to. You mentioned the fact that, uh, and I felt this way too, getting into crypto before finding Richard, but that... Some people, it's almost like a bait and switch where they might seem friendly and, and seem like an open, inviting community. And then you realize that it's just to take advantage of the new users. And so I had immediately uh, bonded with Richard and his information that he was presenting. And long story short, when he had mentioned at the time that he wanted to create his own cryptocurrency, I was really excited about that because the previous bear market had really lost a lot of my hopes on what this space might do. And so a lot of us, yourself, myself, and many others followed Richard throughout that process of what was initially Bitcoin Hex to now yep. what is just Hex. And so I participated uh, all the way on day one and have been here ever since. And I'm a really big fan of this community, of what Hex has done for my life. It's really something that is an opportunity of a lifetime, but it's, it's so early that it's not too late. Now, you mentioned you first saw Richard, I guess, his YouTube videos in 2017. Was that the, obviously, he wasn't really talking about crypto then. Was that just some of the the, the life help kind of stuff, more the survive kind of thing that you saw? It was. So those were some of the first videos that I had seen were his self-help. And when I immediately clicked on his YouTube link 
Uh, it was from someone bad talking him. And I said, hey, let me do my own research. Let me see who this is. Uh, I had seen the top hat. I had seen the throne, et cetera. Because uh, in the background, his banner image on the web or on the YouTube channel had all of that. Um, but as far as the actual first videos, they were self-help. They were you know, how to stop trading and gambling, how to give a good apology. And I really just thought like, man, this guy doesn't have to be doing this, right? And he is doing this and he's educating people on amazing uh, content that you can use for life and skills that you can use for life that also transfer to cryptocurrency as far as, you know, having integrity and kind of just understanding what has value versus what might just seem like narrative and dreams. Awesome. Yeah, it's funny. I look back on those videos now and they, they age really well because the things he talks about are, are forever. It's just not in that time. If, if he would have recorded those videos in 2014 or 10 or even in the 90s, those things are applicable today, even more so in, in the crypto. And I'm actually really thankful that, that he did those videos way back then. So if he started doing that stuff now, people were introduced to, to Richard Hart. People that you know look into Hex for the first time may think it's a scam or it's a Ponzi or I don't like Richard Hart's attitude. But he mm -hmm. was doing these things for people before he had this, any skin in the game with a crypto. So you can't say, oh, he's just doing good stuff or talking about you know, how to help you, yourself because he wants to pump the bag of hex. It's not like that. The guy was retired since he was in his early 20s. I think he was 25 years old. He was retired. He was a wealthy guy then. So he was doing those things in 2017 as a wealthy guy for decades. He just did it to truly help people. And I remember seeing those in, I think, in 2018 when I first came across his videos. I don't even know how I saw his video. It just popped up on my Twitter feed or my YouTube feed. And I instantly liked him. I, I like the silliness mm -hmm. of the of yeah. the hat and and just how how honest and um, bombastic he is. So I, I love that about him. You mentioned value. It's a really good segue into you know this particular podcast as far as like the the value of of a hex share. Now right now we're in early 2022. Hopefully when you uh, you listen to this, you can be you know five or ten years from now. You're going to be laughing at this like. You guys could get a T share, and I'm gonna I want to hit on that toward the end of this video of how how valuable and how much we take for granted. Just saying T share, it's it's one trillion shares of hex, and I, I think to myself when we look back on this in a few years from now, how how valuable a T share is. I think only the big big whales will be even able to get a T share. But I want to get your thoughts on this. So, like, what exactly what are hex? What are hex shares? And I, I got some notes here. So on YouTube, I'll be looking down, but in the podcast audio, you guys will, won't even notice this. But it's better known as a T share, it's a trillion shares. And soon there'll be billion shares or M shares. So when you hear someone talk about hex shares, it, it really is a, a money printer. And when you when you buy hex, the cryptocurrency hex, which is currently on the Ethereum blockchain, soon to be also a copy, the entire system state from Ethereum is going to go over to the brand new uh, Pulse Chain, you're going to have HEX there too. So if you purchase HEX and you stake that, basically a stake is just locking in your, your HEX. So if you hear the word stake, it just means locking it in for a, a period of time from one day to 5,555 days. So when you stake that, you get interest, or I like to say yield is a better term. Um, you're locked into that smart contract. Can you take it from there as far as... Um, uh, a hex share is currently we look at it as a trillion, but it's not going to be soon. And you know, what, what is your definition of a of a hex share? So, so yeah, that's a very good question, Maddie, and and I definitely agree. So, what I would say a hex share is, or what it does, is hex is technically no different than say Ethereum or Bitcoin. Um, when you when you're not looking at the staking and when you're not looking at the shares, right? You can send it. You can uh, receive it, things like that. But the beautiful thing about Hex is the shares. And what that does is you are receiving a part of the inflation and the yield that comes from that proof of stake. And so you also mentioned that you can stake anywhere from one day all the way to 5,555 days. So what a share is, is depending on that day, the amount of stakers, the amount of shares within that pool, you are getting a piece of the pie uh, daily based on the amount of shares that you have. Okay, excellent. And um, I think it's valuable to get 
kind of two people talking or even three people talking because it may not resonate what I'm saying. And then someone listens to you after this and says, oh, OK, I kind of get it. And it takes that redundancy. That was for me. It was really important for me to hear this over and over again as far as some of the tokenomics behind Hex may seem complicated. And they are when you first look into this. It's I say this a lot. It's an IQ test. I've heard this from other mm. people in YouTube. Mm -hmm. Hex really is an IQ test because you have to you got to dig into this pretty deep to really understand. When I first got into this like you, I was a day one FOMO guy. And I got into it, but I, I didn't understand the value of T-shares at that time or just Hex shares. And Richard Hart um, talked about this, like specifically said, it's not about the Hex. It's not about how many Hex that you can accumulate. It's about time. It's about how many, how many shares, how many T-shares can you accumulate and how long can you accumulate that exact number of T-shares or increase that? Because We'll talk about this later in this podcast, how how it dwindles. Like once a stake ends, those T-shares are gone. I'll mention that in a second. But when you you mentioned staking um, your HEX shares, when you when you stake your HEX, so you, you've got, you got your cryptocurrency, you got your HEX, and then you go to the smart contract and you do all of this yourself. There's no middleman, there's no counterparty risk. It's one of the beautiful things about HEX. You, you stake your HEX, your crypto HEX, you get shares. So... An example is you don't have those hex anymore. Your hex that you staked, that you locked away, now are shares. You don't have those um, hex anymore. And let's say you currently stake uh, 20,000 hex. And again, we're in January of 2022. 20,000 hex will get you one T-share, one. And there was a time, I mean, you remember this for sure. And I, remember, I don't remember it vividly at the time, but over the last year or so, people said that you could get a T-share, a trillion shares for 60 cents. And I've got an example in here I'll share with you guys in a second of, even if you didn't get it at 60 cents, a lot of us who were OGs in Hex, we, we remember when Hex, the T-share was $1. So mm -hmm. you, you take your Hex, you put it into shares, you lock it up from one day to, to 5555, your Hex are gone, they're basically burnt, and your Hex are now shares. Those shares will give you a yield every single day that you're in there. And I, I've got notes here that says your principal plus the yield is, is your hex. So let's say if you've got a hex stake and I want to test this out and I, and I do a stake for 90 days, I'll get X amount of shares. But at the end of that stake, like what exactly happens? People get a little confused when, mm -hmm. like I just said, hey, I got hex, but if I use a smart contract and I, I stake my hex. I don't have hex anymore. Now I've got shares. And then when my my 60 day stake ends, what happens to my shares? How do I get my hex? Can you explain that just a little bit? So because the confusion totally. is, is a little odd when you first look into this. Well, it is true. And I'll say that you mentioned it for yourself and same thing that for myself that uh, I knew that hex was cool. I knew that it was something that I really supported Richard Hart with. But same thing, I didn't really understand the power of it until a little bit later. So what happens is, as you mentioned, uh, you are choosing to stake your hex whenever you do. And when you have your liquid hex, you're doing is you're interacting with that smart contract. And when you choose anywhere from one day to 5,555 days, you are now receiving your shares based off of the share rate for that day. Uh, and, and how that's calculated is... You mentioned for 1 trillion shares currently, it's over 20,000 hex. And that number in hex only gets more expensive. So the shares, they're just becoming more rare and rare and rare. But what happens is once you start your stake, those hex actually burn. And instead, you have the shares that once again determine how much yield you're receiving on a daily basis. Now, when that stake ends, you have to manually end it yourself because it is a smart contract, because no company is paying you things like this. These are all functions that you have to manually run. So when it's time for your stake that's ended, that you've served your time and you want your hex back, now you have to manually run the end stake function. And that just computes all of the days of shares that you had and all of the yield that you accrued. And it finalizes that transaction and it burns those shares. And then it mints you the fresh hex back. So it'll be your principal and the yield that you received, as long as you did 
uh, do what you said you were going to do when you initially staked. If you happen to end your stake early, things like that, then you're going to be penalized uh, accordingly because you didn't do what you said you would according to the smart contract. Yeah, the um, it, I think Richard Hart, I think he called it the truth engine. And it, it didn't hit home like the first few weeks, the adoption amplifier, they called it. In Hex, we had a few hundred days. How many days was the adoption amplifier? Was it like 300 days? 351 days. So it was almost a year. And I remember, gosh, this is just an off, off the subject here. But I remember looking at that, the adoption amplifier. And for you, people that may be grabbing this late and run around with the adoption amplifier, it was just a chance. They were putting a bunch of hex in a bucket, basically. And you could put your Ethereum in there and say, I've got one ETH. And depending on how many people put their Ethereum in there, that was how much the percentage, the bucket you would get. So I remember seeing, like at the time, an ETH was like $100 or $125 for one Ethereum. Today, it's around four grand. But putting it in there, I remember seeing, you know, 200,000 hex for $100 worth of ETH. And then it was over a million hex. I remember this vividly, looking back on the old videos I did. There was a time there for a few days in a row, you could spend 125 bucks worth of Ethereum and get like 1.2 million hex, which I, I, I can't do the math right now how much that is even, even at this day. But it's just, it's funny yeah. to look back on those old videos. I'm glad I had that screenshot of time to look at that because a million hex two or three years from now is going to be crazy. And to think we could have got it for a hundred bucks. But um, another great definition of um, what exactly hex the, the shares are, I got this from Richard Hart um, directly. He said, Hex shares receive yield in two ways, from inflation, which is, I think it goes the highest it can go, 3.69%, and you get inflation and penalties, and Brand just mentioned uh, emergency instinct penalties. Hopefully we can get into that too, because sometimes that's confusing to people. Hex receives yield two ways, from inflation and penalties. Their share of the emergency instinct penalties that yield is divided up in the, in the number of shares that you have. So emergency instinct, real quick, just for this analogy, is if you have a million hex and you said you wanted to stake it for five years, but the price is going up and for whatever reason, you're like, you know, I would just like to end this stake now. I don't want to serve my entire term that I wanted to stake for. If I wanted to stake for five years and I just want to get out at one year, you get penalized. It's called an EES or an emergency in stake penalty. And basically, you're not doing your word. That truth engine we talked about, if you don't keep your word, you're going to get penalized. And sometimes it is, is nuts. Just I think yesterday, mm -hmm. someone didn't understand this and they had a huge bag of hex and they didn't even serve, I don't know, a couple hundred days out of a few thousand they were supposed to serve. And they got penalized all of their principal and all of their interest. They basically nuked you know, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of hex by doing this. So it, it really is important for you to take this out of this podcast that the emergency instinct is something really serious. There is a button on go.hex.com uh, go where if you emergency instinct, it, it kind of gives you another secondary button that says, hey, are you sure you want to do this? Because if you click that, you could potentially lose all your principal, all your interest that you've accrued, that yield, or if you've served at least half of the time that you wanted to, say if you want, you're at 2.5 years in and your stake was supposed to mature and end at five years, you're going to get your entire principal back, but you'll lose all of that yield. So when he said that the, the share of the emergency instinct penalties also goes to us as yield. So when that guy, that uh, example I just used, he lost his entire bag of hex and that goes to us as stakers. We get all of that. So if you have 10% of the shares, you get 10% of the income of that inflation. Plus we get emergency in stake uh, penalties. So I know you understand how valuable this. Did you get this when it first started, Brand? Like the first year into this, did you understand right away the emergency in stake penalty and how, how important that would become? So I, I didn't, to be honest. And also to be honest, I didn't understand how important the staking was until I met up with the first hexagon RG3, who's in who's in the back right there, the photo that him and I were meeting up, that I realized I had so many of my stakes, not necessarily in like a staking ladder like you would see traditionally with say certificates 
certificates of deposit, but a lot of my stakes were really uh, were actually like front loaded, and they were towards the beginning, you know, first couple of years, things like this. Now, when you mentioned the end staking and the penalties that come from that, um, as someone that you know follows through with his word as much as I can when it's in my control, things like this. When it comes to staking, it's such a beautiful concept because you're not going to get penalized unless you don't do what you said you were going to do. And the interesting thing is, is that the game theory behind it of say, say if someone did have an emergency or if they did get hacked, things like that. Well, half of those penalties, as we know, goes to the OA and the other half goes to us, but it's going to the hands that were, were stronger or that did have their security maybe a little bit more beefed up. And it really adds to the daily hacks that you're receiving just from the inflation. And now you've got the daily hacks that you're receiving from the end stakes. And so we've seen as T-shirt holders or just shareholders, right? And stakers and hacks, we've seen some days be consistent with say maybe six hacks per day payout. But then we've also seen really big spikes, like you mentioned, where people might not understand the ramifications of what they committed to. Once again, it is a smart contract and there is all of the information that determines how much the, the penalty would be. And it's all based on the time of days that you've served and the time of days that you said you were gonna stake for. So I think it's really cool and it benefits those to be you know, more secure, to do more due diligence, to understand what they're holding. And if you're going to stake, realize that it's something that you probably should follow through with. Man, it's so, it's so true. I have um, stakes that are way up, 10 years, 15 years out. I got them all over the place. And when I first started, I would throw stakes like every every 10 days or every, every week or something. You just didn't know. And looking back, hindsight, I really wish I would have pushed those out even further than I did because at the time, we mentioned that some people got, some lucky people got one, trillion shares, a T-share for 60 cents, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars as it creeped up. And to think if they only locked in the T-shares for one year or 60 days, well, I'm going to touch on a second ago, uh, later in this podcast, how how really, really important, I want to hit this home, when your stake ends, your T-shares are gone. You get hex back, which is great. You get your, you get your hex, you can do whatever you want to with it, but that the T-share, that value of the T-share is locked in for the length of that specific stake. And once it's done, um, I'll talk about it in a second, I may go over this now, is I got an example of when your stake ends and you got used to that amount of T-shares, looking at it over and over, that daily payout you mentioned, it can be six hex a day, eight hex a day recently. If you get eight hex a day for 10 years, that, that is a mind-numbing number. And maybe I'll go into this real quick just to, to see how, how incredible the maturing of a stake is, that great feeling. But again, you're going to miss that. You're going to miss that feeling because mm -hmm. of the T-shares that you lost. So when a stake matures or you have to emergency in stake, it will stop the stake. It stops your money printer. It, it's completely, it's done. That printer that you get used to is finished. That share... I put it down here, that share is the engine. It really is the engine you had. That's gone forever. So when you enjoy seeing that amount of T-shares and you want to get them back again, say if you had 100 T-shares and you want to get that back, then it's going to cost you so much more to get that same amount of shares. And to demonstrate that, the power of shares, let's say, I'm not going to use a 60 cent example because I don't want to like touch the bottom and then you know use that example like the best case scenario. But there were people who got T-shares at $1. We can remember that. So if you bought T-shares at $1, so you got 100 T-shares for 100 USD, you lock that in, that worth of hex. And let's say you lock it in for the entire 5555. How valuable would that be? Each T-share earns a yield. And we'll, we'll kind of hit this over and over so people can, can hear it numerous times. Each T-share earns a yield of daily hex. And for currently it's around you know seven or eight, but it can pop up and um, go up in the future. That number is going to go up. But let's just keep it for this example. Let's just be conservative and keep it around seven or eight. A hundred T shares times eight hex per day is about eight hundred hex daily for the year. Three hundred and sixty-five days in a year. 
800 hex times 365 days is 292,000 hex per year. And you lock that in, the value of that T shares is giving you that 292,000 hex a year for 15 years. At the end of that 15 years, you got used to seeing every day, and it's addictive when you look at this. You got used to seeing 100 T shares giving you that amount of hex daily. Now you can't use it until it's over. So it's kind of fun watching that accumulate and you know him, imagine 15 years from now or even 10 years from now and your hex, your, your stake is getting ready to end. And every day you, every week you look at that and you got a hundred T shares. When that matures, that stake is over and those hundred T shares are gone forever and they're replaced by 4.4 million hex. Just, and get this, the value of that, 4.4 million hex at the end of your stake, that that 15 year stake, cost you $100 when you bought it. And that is a really powerful example of how valuable T shares are and how important it is to lock it up, not for 30 days or 60 days or even a year. If you do that, that's great, but it just demonstrates how powerful it is. You could have bought hex, 100 bucks worth of hex, a dollar per T share, and you lock it up then, even if you didn't know in hindsight how valuable that was going to be, uh, Richard Hart talks about, and you mentioned this before we were um, in the green room there, we're, we're saving, uh, Hex saves us from ourselves. And thank goodness I locked in some pretty long stakes because I look at the T-shares of those uh, stakes, individual stakes, and some of them are a lot of T-shares. And I look at them mm -hmm. like, thank goodness I didn't do that for just one year. And I locked a few of those in. Not a lot of hex, but I got some 10-year stakes, some 11, 12, a 15-year stake. To look at that and know that those hex, that amount of T-shares are locked in for 10 or 15 years is so great because that is going to snowball and accumulate and it's going to compound interest. It's crazy. Do you remember hex when it, do you vividly remember when it, you could get T-shares for, you know, five, ten dollars $10 each? So I do. And because I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, like you mentioned, it went from day one of the adoption amplifier that was, there was so much anticipation from uh, waiting for the, the product to be launched, right? That the, the amount of hex that people got per uh, Ethereum was a lot less than say that 1.8 million hex uh, per Ethereum on say day 33. And so the other thing that also some of us uh, just don't even realize how powerful it was, was part of that, um, you know, that beginning launch phase, that 351 day launch phase also had like a referral. And so you could self-refer oh, yeah. or you could refer to other people. So if you self-referred from that 1.8 million, I'm blanking on the numbers. I want to say it's like maybe it was 20% maybe uh, extra that you would get from that referral, the self-referral. But you just look at those numbers and Here's the thing that that really matters is at the end of the day, the the value in dollars of those 1.8 million hex at that time was not very much, but it really is a, a long term game and just understanding what you are holding because when it comes to the hex, when it comes to the staking, it's so much more rare than any of us can really comprehend. And the interesting thing too is the demand for hex and the amount of people that are learning about it, you know, each day as we progress, it's just more and more and more. And so you have these people, as you mentioned with yourself and myself that luckily might not have known what maybe we were doing all the way, but just staked some of those, those big hex stakes for a long amount of time. And now you've got something that when you stake your hex today is always going to be the best day for the share rate right? That 20,100 something hex currently for one T-share, that number constantly goes up over time. And so if you do a stake today, for example, say for the, the max length stake, say 5,555 days, well, not only are you getting the best share rate that hex will ever have uh, at that time, but you're also locking that the whole time throughout that stake. And so it really is something that is super monumental and there's always meat on the bone. This is the thing I love is that there's always meat on the bone for new people to come in, for people to want to stake and be interested in it. It's not just something that 
the earlier people are rewarded, it's that people can really use this as a financial instrument that it's designed to do. And they can really make a lot of, you know, life-changing wealth. That's awesome. It, it remind, give me a, a thought here. I don't want people to hear this example I got and think, oh man, you got, you could get a hex at, you know, you get a trillion shares for $1 and they're really expensive now. And you're talking about, you know, did I miss the boat? Hex is two years old. It's still really young. It's been gate kept. Not a lot of people have seen this project. And even though you could have got, you know, a T share, a trillion shares for a dollar or five dollars or 10, that boat's long gone. But you can't get a Bitcoin for a dollar anymore. You can't get an Ethereum for $10 anymore. You never will be able to. Hex, we talk about 20,000 Hex right now to get a T-share. You don't have to focus on T-shares. And this podcast may be irrelevant when you look at T-shares in the future because all you have to do is get as many shares as you possibly can. And I would love to get away from, in the future, get away from trillion shares or billions or millions because I don't want people to think that if I can't get a T-share, I don't want hex. I don't want to get into it. It's too late. Or even if I can't get a, a few billion shares, I just want people to understand the value of shares, just getting your shares in. And no matter what amount of shares you have, I want you to lock it in for as long as you can. Obviously, Brandon and myself, we're not financial advisors. We can't give anything. This is just entertainment. But I want people to lock in as long as they possibly can. You, you're going to show a, a slide here in a second of how long people are believing in hex and and the confidence we have in hex from you know the average link stake people are are staking their hex for a long and long period of time because we're confident we understand you know the algorithm and the code and how it's been audited and then people behind it there's no there's no admin keys or anything so it does give confidence but take away this from this video get as many shares as you possibly can don't worry about the t or the b or the m just get shares Lock it up for as long as you possibly can and let that money printing machine work for you every single day, generating that yield of hex. When when you start seeing the example I mentioned, 100 T-shares, that's, that's working for 15 years. So if even if you have to make a small stake, try out the 10-year to get that maximum amount of yield you can. Try the 15-year. Lock in that because two or three years from now, when the the hex price and the and the share price is just going to be astronomical to, to grab a billion or a million hex. You've locked yours in today, and Brand mentioned today is the best time because it's always going up. And the, uh, again, back to that example, let's say that hundred T shares that you locked up for fifteen years, it's going to end in two thousand thirty six. And let's do the cost of a hundred T shares. I won't even do it for imagine two thousand thirty six trying to do the cost of 100 T-shares. You, you, it's probably impossible to do because the price of the price of Hex, like what if Hex is even a dollar or $2 or three? Mm -hmm. So let's, I don't even want to use this example about God only knows, trying to get 100 T-shares in 2036, but let's try to do the cost of 100 T-shares today, January 2022. One T-share cost around 20,000 Hex. And let's just say Hex is worth 25 cents. We're around there right now between 22 and 25 cent. If hex is worth 25 cent and 20,000 hex gets you one T-share, 20,000 hex is worth 5,000 USD. So if you wanna buy a T-share today, one T-share, 25 cent per hex, it would cost you five grand to get 20,000 hex. So your same T-shares, the 100 T-shares at five grand each, is a half a million dollars. When I did those figures today, it it was like, what? A hundred <laughs> T-shares. We talked about T-shares early on. And if you missed a boat, it's totally fine. I want to emphasize that it's not too late. I used this example of, you know, a hundred dollars a couple of years ago to get a hundred T-shares. And now that same T-share value when your stake ends, this is just an example of how valuable it is when your stake ends, if you want to try to get back that economic energy, that mass that you had, whether it's one T-share or that 100 T-shares, going from $100 USD to get 100 in just two years later, it's costing a half a million to get that. Once those shares are gone, they're gone forever, and it's going to cost you a lot of money to get those T-shares back. But there is one thing 
I'll let you hit on this, Brandon, if you don't mind. If you if you've got time on your side, if you're young or if you want to, you know, shoot it out five years, seven years, go for the 10 to 15. If you've only got a little bit of money to work with, say you got a thousand dollars and how advantageous is it to take that thousand and say, I can't afford a lot of T-shares, but I can take this thousand and throw it down the road. And can you tell them how that can help you accumulate more T-shares? This is something really important. Totally. I, I definitely agree. And I, I do want to just say, even with the 10,000 X that we've had before staking, that thousand from a 10,000 X would be 10 million, right? So that's just yeah. within a couple of years. But to answer the question directly, it's amazing that what we have is called longer pays better. And so you mentioned that, hey, you can pay X amount of hex for one t-shirt today, but each year that you stake longer, up until 3,641 days, you get 20% more of the shares. So you can literally three times what was going to be a one day stake, you can three times that economic energy, and now you can have three times the amount of money printers and shares that are just going to give you more and more yield. And so what it's doing is it's incentivizing good behavior. And we see that now with an average length stake of say 6.07 years, it used to be one year and then it used to be two years. So people are really understanding what this product is and that they can use it to their advantage by just playing the patient game and allowing those shares to work for them because it really is, as they say, uh, the time in the market versus timing the market. And no matter how many shares you have, when you have them for such a long time, the amount of accumulation that you receive is just so much more than you ever could have imagined. Yeah, it, and that's what it really hits home. When, when you can get you know a half a T-share or 0.5 of a T-share, you can make that so much bigger if you're willing to put the time in. And I, I encourage people, when, when I worked, I was like, you know, you guys, please look into Hex. You know, it, if, you, if you've got $1,000 or 500 that could be a lot of money to somebody. But most people have 50 bucks, 100 bucks. You know, take away something in your life, a fancy dinner or a new pair of kicks. Take that money you would do and put it into Hex. No matter what the price of Hex right now, no matter how much it is, forget the T-shares and all these Bs and Ms. Just get shares. Focus on how many shares you can get. And then you can, like Brand said, you can multiply that. Every single year longer that you stake, it's 20%. Um, and that goes up to what, Brent, you mentioned 3,641 days is kind of the, the, the most you can get. And it's, it's a little confusing because that's about 10 years, but people are like, well, why would I go, why would I lock, if I lock in the most amount of T-shares and that energy in only 3,641 days, 10 years, why, mm -hmm. why would I have to, Think about 11 years or 12 years. Why would mm. anybody do 15 years if you can lock it in the most at the 3641? Why would you do a 5555? Five, five, five? Right. So that's an absolutely beautiful question because myself and a lot of us were, were thinking the same thing at the beginning. And so is even Richard, right? But what we mentioned, some of the mechanics with the staking is that you are locking in that share rate and the amount of shares that you do have for the length of your stake. And we know that on top of the yield, or sorry, on top of the inflation and on top of the emergency end stakes, that's kind of what receives the amount of hex is based on the shares. So if you have someone that say has a max length stake in shares of 3,641 days versus 5,555, well, when 3,641 days ends, now you're going to have to end your stake. And if you do end up wanting to restake more, you're going to be paying that new share rate that is 10 years later. But if you have those same shares all the way for 5,555 days, then that's really where this compounding interest, the amount of hex that you receive in the form of yield, that's where that really skyrockets from say 3,641 to 5,555 because you're just maintaining something that's so rare and that's locked in through time and you're holding it for another five years. Awesome. I love that. It took me a while to understand that. Like you said, I, I looked at it like, why, why are we doing five, five, fives? Why not just do, if the most I can get is that 10 year stake, I'll just do a 10 year and then I'll do another 10 year, and another 10 year. But like you said, once you get to that point, if you got a 3641, that's how many days, about 10 years, 
imagine like year five and year six, when you're watching so many people get onboarded and get introduced to Hex that had missed it now. Because I look at YouTube even now in early 2022, I look at these quote unquote big YouTubers that have a huge followings, 100,000 people. They're still not talking about Hex, even though I know that they know Hex is mm -hmm. something special. These guys hold Hex, but for what, whatever reason, they still gatekeep it. A lot of the coin market cap sites, they still gatekeep. So even now, we talk about so many good things and all these wonderful things that are happening in Hex and how much a price accumulation is and how hard it is to get uh, T-shares now. It's going to be so much harder when you've locked in that 10-year stake or that seven-year stake and you look at it year three, year four, year five, and you're so used to looking at that amount of Hex coming in daily. After a couple of years, when you take that chance on Hex and you're watching that, that yield come through every day, the difference in that 10-year stake, like you mentioned, a 15-year stake, you're prolonging that joy, that, that looking at that Hex every single day, the yield, if you had ended at, five, at the 10-year mark, you lose five full years of having those shares paying out that hex every single day. So that, that's when it made a lot of sense to me when I looked at all my short stakes, 30 days, 60 days, even the one year stake came due. I looked mm -hmm. at that stake and it's like, man, I started that, that stake on, on day three or day 10. And I looked at like, man, this is gonna end now after one year, but I could, I could have staked at day three or day 10 when that massive amount of shares I could have got, I'm ending it like a dum-dum at year one when I could have locked that in for 10 years or 15 years and been able to give it to my future self or my kids or my grandkids. Imagine a 15-year state giving it to, you know, a three-year-old kid right now, you know, gifting yeah. someone, you know, a couple of hundred bucks worth of hex and locking it in for 15 years on their 18th birthday. You can say, hey, surprise, check out this hex. That is the greatest gift you could give someone financially. And you mentioned um, emergency instinct. We touched on this a little bit. The emergency instinct is paid out to stakers. We mentioned who keep their word. And you mentioned about the um, the OA. So let's say I got a million hex and I end it today. I say, screw it. I just want to get out of this. I want to take some profit. I don't care about the penalty. 50% of that in stake penalty goes to the stakers who are keeping their word. It gets distributed to us, kind of like, hey, it's a surprise. But can you talk a little bit about that? Some people have an issue with the other 50% of the in stake, emergency in stake penalties going to the OA. When I first heard about this at, in the early start, in the early stages of HEX, I was like, that sounds like a lot. And it, what happens if someone has so much HEX and every day he's dumping on us? Isn't that awful for the price of HEX? But there was something we didn't know about that. I hope you can hit on that as far as, you know, explain to people why um, the mechanism is the emergency instinct 50% goes to the OA and why that's actually a good thing. Exactly. So once again, what a great question because some people, they hear about the OA and they think, okay, this, this is something that could be uh, super detrimental and something that they might not think is, is positive for price. And so what you have is you look at something, Richard mentioned this analogy on Big Payday itself, which was November 19th. And he had said that Hex is so similar to, say, uh, a De Beers Diamond Corporation, where, where the diamonds themselves, you've got such a amount of supply that the, uh, the other people own, things like that. And then you've got a large amount of supply that, say, De Beers owns. And what you have is just like with anything else, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Facebook, stocks like this that are, you know, kind of centrally owned by some of the, the, the creators, things like that. What you're doing is you're allowing the, the OA to pretty much remove that supply from the market. And they would never be incentivized ever to sell on their heads to, you know, completely dump that price because once again, why would someone you know, shoot themselves in the foot of a project that they founded? And so what this does is some people, say yourself and myself, right? We get 50% of those, those emergency end stake penalties. Well, we might take that if we have a stake that ends soon, and we might realize that as gains. But what you're having is you're having the other half of that hex go into what we've seen 
be the most diamond of hands and almost the the best entity in Hex and as a staker that really supports the price and that really makes what Hex is a lot more rare than would have ever happened if that function was just going to go to the rest of the stakers. And so it's something that people are seeing over time that, okay, we've got a incredible founder that is doing live streams constantly. He's educating people for free. He's helping people not get scammed. But then he's also really a firm believer in his product. I mean, you've got people that now have, once again, an average stake length of 6.07 years. And so we're all kind of realizing that, hey, we can earn a lot of gains via not staking and just holding for the price appreciation. But if we you know, stake and we allow that price appreciation to multiply by the yield that we're receiving, then the numbers are really just astronomical. Wow. Um, having the OA hold those hex is probably the, one of the greatest things about hex. And when you when you first hear this, like Brand is saying, it 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 may turn off some people. They're like, "Well, wait a second. And for those, uh, we kind of throw around OA like everybody understands what this is. If you're new to Hex, OA is just the um, the origin address. And he can have, or he, nobody knows who it is. A lot of people think it's Richard Hart. Who knows? It's not important. And they hold numerous wallet addresses, not just one specific address. So a lot of the Hex is in this OA, this origin address. And early on, like we said, it worried me even. And I, I trusted Richard Hart. I knew whoever the origin address was that it was going to be in pretty good hands. We didn't know how good these hands are. Brand mentioned they are diamond hands. To my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, Brand, has even one hex from this origin address been dumped on anybody? No. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So think about that. Two years, whoever this origin address is, whether it's one person, whether it's Richard, whether it's a group of people, they've got thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands, millions of hex. And the price has gone up 10,000 X over the course of two years. It's crazy. So these people, obviously they have other cryptos, probably Bitcoin, Ethereum, lots of others. If they needed the money, which I don't think they do, the last thing I think, and they prove this, that they're going to sell and get out of is hex. They got other crypto, surely. And to, uh, to understand now, looking back with two years hindsight, that this person has got millions and millions of hex. They haven't dumped it once. They haven't hurt us one time. And it goes without saying that when Pulse Chain launches and the PLS token and the Pulse X token, the origin address is also going to have a lot of supply. So people, the, the haters and the naysayers about hex and Richard Hart and Pulse Chain, that's one of the things they point out. They point out that it's a bad thing that the origin address has a lot of X crypto, whatever that may be. To me and the brand and the people that have been around a long time, I would much rather have the OA and Richard Hart himself, people that I've, I've trusted that have earned my trust over the last two years. I would rather someone with those kind of hands that when hex is 0 0.0005 all the way up to 55 cent or so, they held the entire way through that millions and millions of dollars, billions of dollars, they've held. And, and in a way that nobody else in Hex would have held. So they've earned my trust. I'm sure they've earned yours. So going forward, you're going to hear a lot of negativity about Hex, about Richard Hart, about the origin address. But they failed to mention it's a trial by fire. They went through the trenches of Hex going from under a penny, fractions of a penny, all the way to half a dollar, and they never sold. So my confidence is I would love that origin address to have as much hex as they possibly can because they proved that they could hold on to that. You've got a graph, a, a slide here I'd love for you to show about um, how long I mentioned confidence in him and this project. What is the average length of stake? Like, say the average length of, say if I use one year, what if people aren't doing 30 days or 60 days? What if the average is one year to get a one year average, that means there's gotta be a lot of, of hex stakes that are going long period of time, but we're not at one year average. Can you share with me, and people that have listened to this audio can't see this, but this is just a graph the brand's gonna show. It's basically statistics showing the number of stakers and how much money is staked and the, AP, the APY. And also this is important, the duration 
of how much confidence people have in this project. How how delayed is your gratification? Can you go over that, Bram? Mm. Totally. So so yeah, we have it on the screen right now. This is just from Staker app. So we can see that there is thirteen and a half billion dollars locked, and that's for an average of six point oh seven years. And so once again, when you mentioned the OA, just real quick, is that someone like Satoshi Nakamoto, founder of Bitcoin, also has a million Bitcoin. So it's it's similar to what the OA would be, where if they've never shown bad behavior, why would they ever do it in the future? But when we look at the duration, I mean, someone like yourself and myself can remember that once again, that average has been you know steadily creeping up over time. And it's showing that people are not just talking the talk about, oh, Hex is great. We're all staking 5,555, right? Uh, but we're also walking the walk. And as, as you also say, there's people that have one-year stakes, people that have no stakes, two-year stakes. And so to get an average of 6.07, there has to be a lot more of those longer stakes that kind of make that average go up. And so it's just awesome to see because we're seeing good behavior being rewarded and people are benefiting tremendously. I mean, when you stake, personally, I, I never expected when I got into Hex and when I became a staker, right, to experience some of these other benefits other than just finances, right? You you realize that, okay, hey, if the average is 6.07 or if I've got stakes that are in the future, well, then I want to be alive for those stakes in the future, right? I want to be able to cash those out and to end that stake so it doesn't end up getting distributed to the rest of the stakers. So it allows people to think uh, think forward into the future for what they want. And it's delaying gratification, which is the best thing that you can do. Awesome. I love seeing it. When you can tangibly see this, I can tell people all day, hey, man, people have confidence in HEX and they're locking their HEX, their shares up. We're talking a lot about shares. You're locking these shares up not for 30 days and trying to, let's just see if it's around. Is it going to rug pull? Richard Hart and the team created something pretty amazing. The code in Hex is, is pretty beautiful to look at. If you look at the code, I remember looking at it and trying to dissect it and trying to figure out, this is crazy, man. This is nuts. And I know just a little bit about a code, but when you look at it and it's been audited three times, there's no admin keys, it's immutable. All the things that a cryptocurrency should be, Everything that DeFi was supposed to be, what a cryptocurrency was supposed to be, Hex is that thing. And when you see people given the confidence, like you're saying, to get an average of 6.07 years, how many eight-year stakes and 10-year stakes and 13 and 15 stakes do you have to get in order to get an average of six when a lot of people are doing a week or a month or two months? That's a lot of confidence of a lot of people. 13.5 billion with a B at the time of this video. And another cool thing is it's only about, what, less than 10% of the total supply of HEX is actually staked, and it's 13.5 billion with six years. So the future is is so bright with HEX. This is, HEX chart is, is the best chart, Richard mentioned this a lot, it's the best chart in crypto, is the HEX mm -hmm. price. And the only thing that is better is the share price. If you look at the share price, do you have a chart with the share price on there or is it just the price of HEX? I do. So I think it's this next one right here. So this is the payout per share. Uh, okay. We can see this is the T-share payout. So at the very bottom right here was all the way with 60 cents. But maybe if I just go to something that might be a little bit easier to see right here. So this is the go.hex, uh, go uh, go.hex.com website, right? Where you can stake, and this is what we see the interface looks like. But if I kind of just, actually, I can't zoom in. Sorry about that. But if you kind of just look at the T-share price that you're mentioning in dollar, that is what has outperformed holding Hex liquid. So that's awesome. <laughs> I, I love this, um, that website. I use it a lot just to, just to make myself smile. Let me see if I can add this too, because this is um, hexcalc.net. For you guys that are, aren't watching this, and you can go there. It's uh, H E X C L. I'm sorry, H E X C A L C dot net. And I want to show you this. It's it's really powerful. The screen you were on, the go.hex.com, has this feature as well. You can see the value of your hex and the days. So let's just say if I have ten thousand hex, 
Well, let's do 20,000 because that's what a, a T share is. And I want to do that for 30 days. This site's awesome. So, and I want you to predict the price at the end of, not 22 days, let's do uh, 90 days, three months. So the, the price right now is about 25 cents. Uh, I'm thinking the price is going to be, let's just be super conservative and only go 30 cents. So I can calculate that. And on hexcalc.net, you can see these numbers right away. And it's, it's I love it. It's awesome. So you got 20,000 hex, 90 days. At the end of these 90 days, your hex is going to be worth about 30 cents in this example. So you look at the current value of 20,000 hex. If you want to buy that now, it's about $4,600. You stake it for 90 days, and at the end of that, we'll look at that. That's a one T share. At the end of that, what do we got? Six thousand one hundred and sixty-five dollars. Now, you may look at that and go, "Man, I started with forty-six hundred. I've only got sixty-one. Well, check this out. What if you take the same twenty thousand? We were talking about how many shares you can get. That was one T share you can get. What if you want to delay gratification? You don't have a lot of money. You don't have a lot to put into hex, but you want to get in." And you're willing to put in delayed gratification and wait for an extended period of time. What if you waited uh, 10 years? And let's make a price prediction. Let's, again, be really conservative. 10 years from now, with all the positive things about HEX, what's the price going to be? Let's just say it's $1. That same value of HEX that you put in, the $4,600, over a 10-year period with compounding interest, Take a picky peek at that. Wow. <laughs> so you're almost at $100,000. Where are you going to be in 10 years? You're going to be somewhere. So whatever you do with HEX or cryptocurrency or you're working hard at your job or whatever, unless something really bad and unfortunate happens to you, you're going to be around 10 years from now. Why not take that 4600 bucks or 1000 or 500 and do that? Take your $500 or your 1000 lock it in for as long as you feel comfortable. But this is just a, a real-world visual example of that particular amount of USD being in there, locking it in for three T-shares. The same amount, the 20,000 hex example that I used for 90 days, get you one T-share. Your same amount of USD that you can afford in this example, you tripled your T shares, and for 10 years, you're going to walk away with a hundred grand. And that's only if the hex price is at a dollar in 10 years. And I don't know anybody that thinks that's the price of hex. Let's get a little bit crazy and think what if hex is five bucks? Same example. Look at that. Half a million dollars from that one stake that you put in for 10 years. You really delayed the gratification for 10 years, five bucks in 10 years. I think that's completely doable. This was just one example, just to show you guys how powerful T-shares are and how powerful time is. So again, this is for the people who want to get into Hex. You may not have a lot of money, but you've got time. Time is better. Bran said earlier in this podcast that Longer pays better. And Richard has been preaching that forever. If you've got a lot of hex, a uh, couple million hex, and you want to put it in for a month, it's not going to do a lot. A lot is good, but the longer time period is the key. Longer pays better in hex. So if you take anything from this entire podcast, look at the idea of being a whale. You can be a whale too. One day soon, I don't think even really wealthy people will be able to afford a T-share. Right now, when we're talking early 2022, you got the possibility of getting a T-share if you work hard or half a T-share, or if you can only get, you know, 0.25 T-shares and you're willing to wait that extended period of time, you can double up and triple up your efforts and multiply those T-shares. So anything else to add to that, Brandon? I hate to go on so, so long. I can, I can talk about this forever. And we talked about this in the green room too, that I feel like we're going on an hour now on this one pat podcast focused on just shares, but I feel like we could go on forever and these these podcasts go by really quick. But, you know, what do you think about that as far as the power of T-shares and, and waiting for that time? Just that one example, it, isn't it awesome just to see that, how it can go so high? It, it's true. I mean, I don't really have much more to add. I mean, I want to say thank you, obviously, for having me on. But 
the the last thing that I do want to say as far as the people that are listening or the people that are listening and watching right now is we're not just once again talking the talk. It's not like we don't have stakes. Uh, we do have stakes. We have staked. We understand how this ecosystem has worked throughout the past two years. And we're really trying to educate those that haven't been in yet or those that are kind of new to the game. We're trying to help you uh, you know, maximize the amount of potential and the system itself that ultimately benefits you, your family, and your financial future. So it's something that's really life-changing and just want to say that the product is amazing, Richard is amazing, but even more so is the community because you've got so many people that are committed. So interact with the community if people ever get a chance. Yeah, that's a good point to, to kind of end by. There, there is so many people. If you go to Telegram, I'm going to leave a, a bounty of links in the description of this video. So no matter where you are, you can find me, you can find Brandon on Telegram, on YouTube. He's got a fantastic channel there too. Please support him. He's one of the pillars of the Hex community, one of the true OGs. And this was a blast for me. I, I would love to look back. I was telling the guys in the first episode. I want to look back five or six years from when our stakes are ending, a, a 10 year stake, and look back on this podcast, how far we've come and how ridiculous some of these conversations are going to be. Like, I want people to look back and go, wow, man, you guys could have got a t share. And how important is that going to be to just look back and see like evidence of how well Hex was designed and how great Pulse Chain is? We're talking about Pulse Chain and and the Pulse Token and that whole ecosystem. We'll talk about that forever. Obviously, this podcast is all about Pulse Chain and Hex. But at this point, Pulse is not even launched yet. Pulse Chain is coming up in a couple of months, probably. We've got Hex here, and it's worked beautifully. And it's weird to say it's worked flawlessly or perfection, mm -hmm. but it really has. Richard talks about that a lot. But you know, how much better can Hex do? I don't know what they could have done. It's been up 100% mm -hmm. of the time, 100%. And you can't get better than that. So it's weird to talk in, in phrases and that kind of hyperbole of saying that something is perfect. But in a lot of ways, Hex is, is kind of that perfect DeFi crypto. And you mentioned community. This is the best community that, that I've ever been around um, in a cryptocurrency. It's great. These people are real and they care about you and they'll donate and give their time freely to you. The most important thing that we have is time. And to find a community, you can reach out to me or brand personally, and we'll answer you personally. I'll talk to you for as long as you need me to. And the community is like that too. Did you did you experience that like right away in this community? I did. So once again, I didn't really know how uh, how prominent or how prevalent there was of a hex community. I just knew that I was following Richard for such a long time, and I would just watch all of his live streams. But I didn't realize up until Richard started. Uh, mentioning the telegram right the t.me slash hex crypto i didn't right. realize until he had mentioned that that oh my gosh man there's there's a whole bunch of like-minded people that have been following richard for a very long time too that believe in similar principles and ideals and that also practice what they preach right these are the people that have stayed for a long time and we, we can see the average is over six years and i've never met a community of people that were so real that I can call my friends and that I can just really learn a lot from. So it's awesome that we're not just, you know, learning and growing uh, together as far as ourselves, but we're doing it as a community. And that's the biggest thing that I really think is we're, we're sharing this with the world. We're documenting it. And with the hundred percent uptime, I mean, I know people that have lots and lots of money locked up into this and it's just beautiful to know that, Hey, I can, I can rest my head at night knowing that I don't have to fear uh, my my crypto being hacked or being stolen. I know that this is an immutable code that has shown its structure and security over time. And I'm super happy to be a part of it. Awesome. Me too, man. I, I'm going to look back really thankful uh, of the relationships that we built. And it's really important, man. I'll, I'll say it again. The, the, this crypto community is fantastic. Reach out to us. Put it to the test. If you don't think it is, or you've been experienced to other cryptocurrencies and those communities um, didn't kind of live up to what you thought they were, put us to the test. Reach out to us and see, okay? I would love to hear from you guys. I would love to hear your feedback on this podcast, which you'd like to hear in the future, any other guests you'd like me to talk about or subjects you'd like to talk about. So, Brand, I appreciate you being here, man. It's been a long time. We've talked back and forth, like you said, but I've never got you on a stream 
for an actual recording. So this has been a blast. I truly appreciate your time. And thanks for being here with me and making this second episode so early in the podcast. It's going to be a hit. I think people are going to love this interview. You were a great guest and I appreciate you, man. Me too. Thanks, Maddie, for having me. You're welcome, man. Have a great day. And I'll, um, I'll just sign off and say thank you for listening to the Pulse Chain Podcast. This was episode number two with Bally at Brand. Make sure you look in the link in the description of this video to find out where you can reach me, where you can reach him, where you can find this podcast on many different platforms. I appreciate y'all time. Have a fantastic day, and I will catch y'all on the B side.